what is going on guys so this video is gonna be a little bit out of order because I just realized I didn't really film an intro and all the footage that I did uh, record at the start it's you know I'm all over the place I'm trying to figure out I'm trying to diagnose issues and I think instead of watching half an hour of me trying to diagnose a bad O2 sensor I think it's better to just summarize it real quick here so it's almost two weeks now since I dropped the car off. Um, the shop that I took it to ran into a couple issues, so it took longer than uh, expected. Uh, it, everything works, it's dialed in now. Uh, I will show some clips from earlier on, so it might not make total sense, but um, I just thought it'd be, it, it's, it's gonna be a quicker video, and uh, instead of watching me you know, struggle to figure out how to diagnose an O2 sensor, I think it, we all just wanna watch um, you know how it looks and and how it sounds more importantly on the car so yeah here we go nissan titan headers on a q45 let's get to it all right okay so everything's back in the car <sighs> warming it up so we're gonna go for a little bit of a trip now um, just had to rinse some of this crap off the car I'm just gonna roll the, all the windows out a bit just because it's still kind of wet I don't like water flying into the car but this should give a somewhat uh, decent audio the GoPro is not too bad at picking it up so this video is more of just a rant um, oops, more of a rant about the full install and just the kind of issues that I ran into. So we are running Nissan Titan uh, Shorty JBA headers for those. I don't know how much of this I'm going to include, so I'm just going to do the whole thing. We are running Catless JBA Titan Shorties uh, into some pretty nice mandrel bends into the existing X pipe and then back out through the thrush resonators and into a vibrant uh, straight through racing muffler. Uh, it is quite loud still. I'm hoping that some of that kind of goes away as it breaks in. Uh, typically with exhaust, it kind of goes the other way usually. So we'll see how bad it gets. I might actually put another muffler in. It's uh, we've gotten to the point in the, my, in my town where cops are really out for people with loud exhaust, and I'm just not trying to play this game with them right now. I'm too broke to be playing that game with them. So. <sighs> Um, I will get some out of the car audio clips. Uh, I don't know if you can tell, but I have to steer this thing with two hands. The steering does rub a little bit onto the driver's side manifold. Um, there's nothing I can really do about that until I can get a polyurethane bushing on the steering rack. And I'm gonna replace the rack and the pump. They both leak. Uh, they are original, so they need to be replaced. I've got some stop leak in there now, and it seems to be working. Um, I just, you know, it's something that's on the list. Let's just say that. Oh. Let the kids go. So anyways, as I was saying, um, car feels great. I was worried about the lack of torque. Uh, I thought we might have reduced our exhaust velocity. Um, you hear a lot of people say, oh, you've reduced the back pressure. And I might have even said that at 1.2, but um, the engineers are correct. It's not a lack of back pressure, it's a lack of velocity. And um, having a narrow exhaust will increase velocity. Uh, stock exhausts are quite well designed. So when you go messing with exhaust pipes and stuff like that and you lose a bunch of torque, it's because at lower RPMs, you are not creating enough velocity. And I'm happy to say that, yeah, there's a little bit. I think the stock manifolds actually aren't as bad as I kind of made them out to be, but they're definitely, um, it's not as bad as I thought it would be. With the cat back, it felt like I lost a lot of velocity, even though there was cats in there. So happy to say that they're still a fair bit of velocity. Anyone right now? I kind of feel like heat cycling the exhaust is probably the best bet. 
Um, I do believe that the primary O2 sensor died because of uh, ceramic residue from the install. So when they're bashing the headers and they're test fitting them and starting them up with the, with the existing O2s in there, all of that dust, all that little bits surrounded the, uh, the sensor and clogged it up. That's just my hypothesis. I have zero data to back that up. Uh, like I said, we, I took it to a shop to install the driver's side. So I didn't actually do that one. I did the passenger one. It didn't look too bad. Um, the little bit of driving I did with it, with the bad drivers and the good and the new passengers, um, it definitely felt like it just kind of split the difference. So it sometimes it would run it very lean and sometimes it would run big rich. Uh, replacing the drivers now it drives like stock. Uh, I do notice however that it bounces around the airfields a lot more. So normally it would find, whoa, what the fuck? That was crazy. That guy just ran a stale, stale red. Anyways, so <laughs> every video I do, there's some crazy person driving, cutting me off or running reds. Anyways, so as I was saying, the car runs basically like stock. At idle, it does find 14.7, no problem. But when you're cruising, you'll definitely see it bounce around from 15.1 to 14.5, but it always finds home. Drivability's fine, no issues. I was definitely worried about the sound. It's actually not that bad at cruise. I think if I pulled up beside a cop and gave them a smiley face and kind of waved at them, I don't think they would, I don't think they're looking for me. I think they're looking for straight pipe Civics and, uh, and straight pipe 240s, you know, flooring it at 2 a.m. I'm not gonna give the cops a break. It is an absolutely unjust rule that they're enforcing, but um, <laughs> I'm trying not to be on their list. Let's say that. So, car feels great. Um, I'll definitely get some more audio clips coming up, but right now I just want to heat cycle these headers properly and uh, break them in, let the car relearn. Because I also have the East, uh, TCM that came in the mail. Oh, like right there. I was on like 4% throttle and it just wakes right up. Um, I think there's a little bit less velocity at like true idle for like from 550 to 700, let's say it does feel a little bit lower. Like the stock manifolds are very good at moving the car under like zero load. When you're just idling through lights and stuff like that, it feels like there's a little bit more behind it. But um, past that, like a thousand to 1500, it does feel as strong as stock manifold. But I don't want to say stronger because it's probably, if you could dyno at low RPM loads and kind of check out uh, different uh, power levels, I think that like the below 1500 RPM, it's pretty hard to beat on the stock manifolds. That's really where they like to live. But uh, this thing's a race car now, so that's not where we live. We don't care about idle RPM. We don't care about fuel economy. We care about going fast, getting it down the track. <laughs> Speaking of the track, wow, look at this thing. Woo! Damn, big tire car. Anyways, <laughs> speaking of tracks, um, the racetrack is opening up very, very soon, and I believe it's the 21st or maybe 23rd, but either way, uh, you know, knock on wood, the car is going to be ready for it, and um, I can't wait to see what this thing does. I don't know if the, I mean, I should probably go take this out and do a draggy hit. Oh, there's the cops right there. Um, should do a draggy hit. Yeah, this is fine. I was so nervous about it. Once it's warmed up, this thing sounds fine. Very quiet at idle. I think my problems will be like going up hills. Going up hills near a cop, we might be in trouble. But other than that, I'm not too worried. You're definitely getting more of that exhaust pulse uh, crossover sound. Fourteen seven the whole way. Let's feel the steering here. Okay, the steering's definitely getting better as he notches it on the way back. good. 
got way more of that like muscle carb like thump though. I thought it was gonna have like more of like a high pitch sound. No, it's got like a thump thump. Transmission is definitely relearning. Should feel a lot better today. Car feels super strong. I'm gonna reset all my fuel economy stuff too. So next, oh my God, look at all these jack engine lights. <laughs> Anti-lock, ABS, VDC. <laughs> I, I'm one of those guys that's got, literally got every light on the dash now. Oh, dog's tripping out. I'm freaking out. I was like, what the fuck? I thought it was my car. Kind of learning to steer around it, but yeah, we gotta get. When I do the um, sh uh, steering pump and rack, we will do the uh, the polyurethane bushing because it is kind of annoying, and it also tighten up the steering too. The steering will feel a lot more direct. Just another mod that needs to be done. But until then, we're just gonna drive it like a NASCAR. You know what I'm saying? We only take laps around here. You got a real NASCAR there, buddy. <laughs> sounds so good. I don't know how much it's picking up on the GoPro, but man, it sounds good as hell. Anyway, it's gonna run into Canadian Tire real quick. smell those headers warming up so let them cool down I'm gonna make a bunch of little trips like this just so they can like heat cycle properly oh man that's, that smell it smells like hot metal <laughs> the steering is brutal I'm so used to it just being butter smooth right so when I feel it notch I'm like ah that's fine just gotta remember right turns Also, the steering is crazy, or the uh, shifter is super notchy. At first, I kind of was like, what the hell is going on here? But I kind of like it now. Feels like I'm shifting a pro shifter. All right, windows up. All right, I gotta go buy some crap. But that is the Titan header install. So final notes, um, you gotta bash the primary. Um, on the driver's side, pretty good. Uh, passenger side, the access port can be ground down. Uh, use metal gaskets or OEM gaskets. And take your time, the starter has to come off. There's plenty of room for cats if you wanna go catted. Uh, if you wanna go catless, just use an O2 um, defouler. And remember, if you're gonna go with anything uh, ceramic coated like I did, keep your old O2 sensors and, and break them in with those because they'll probably get shit on and uh, then you can slap the new ones and you'll be good to go. But anyways, I really appreciate watching it and I hope this helps some VK owners because I know you all got cracked manifolds, but I will catch you in the next one. Peace.
14.7, yep, right on the dot. I was worried. I kind of wanted, I didn't know if it was like heat treated enough. So I heated cycled them. I'm just worried that I'm going to call these O2 sensors as well, so I'm just kind of monitoring that.